What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out the ASUS ROG SCAR 3 gaming laptop. I don't do a lot of laptop coverage, but I figured, you know, I do PC gaming builds and stuff like that. Why not check out a gaming laptop as well? Um, and when I saw this, I was really interested in it, finally got my hands on it. Thankfully, ASUS was nice enough to send this out to me, so shout out to them for sponsoring this video. But as you guys know, that's not going to impact my review at all. Stay completely unbiased because gaming laptops are something that I'm personally interested in. So I really wanted to get a look at it, tell you how it performs, because there's a lot of great stuff going on. So this just got released over the summer, so it's not brand new or anything, but I'm still just as hyped. And if you guys want to, you know, find out more about it, if you're interested in this one as well, hopefully this video helps you out. So when I first got it in and got it all unboxed, the first thing that stuck out to me was how sleek it was. So there are different models available for the purchase. This one here features an NVIDIA RTX 2070 graphics card, so you can enable RTX to experience ray tracing in certain games. An Intel i7-9750H CPU with 16 gigs of RAM and a terabyte of hard drive space. Those specs will definitely let us take advantage of the 15.6 inch, 240 hertz refresh rate display at 1920 by 1080p. And that was the first thing that caught my attention. A 240 hertz refresh rate on a gaming laptop? There's not a lot of those out there. Especially when you combine it with RTX graphics. But we'll get into the performance and the benchmarking in a little bit. So when I first got it unboxed, the first thing that stuck out to me was how sleek this looks. On the top we have this brushed aluminum, and when you open it up, the plate has this carbon fiber design to it. Although it is plastic, it feels very sturdy and it all just looks really nice as a cohesive unit here. You couple that with the built-in RGB lighting. You have the RGB keyboard, there's even a light strip that goes around the entire front and side. And this is so when you're, you know, gaming, you have it on your desk, it's gonna have this sort of, you know, glow around it. And the ROG logo on the back side of the laptop is also RGB. The colors and effects can obviously all be customized, but for that extra added visual flair, it does look pretty nice. In terms of the rest of the construction, the hinge here is built very nicely. The hinges fold down into the actual body of the laptop when you close it, and it's very smooth. You can do it with one hand and even one finger. There's a slight amount of screen flex, but it's not a big issue at all. Now back to that screen, like I said before, 1920 by 1080 p 240 hertz refresh rate. It did a great job of keeping the bezels down on the top and both of the sides. There's a decently sized chin on the bottom, but all things considered, I've definitely seen bigger bezels and stuff on other laptops. Now it's an IPS display at 100% sRGB rating, so color accuracy is gonna be on point here. And because it's IPS, we get to take advantage of that higher refresh rate while still keeping the input lag extremely low at just three milliseconds. Moving on down to the keyboard, again, full RGB, individually backlit. It's those usual chiclet keys that you're gonna be familiar with. But if you're gaming or streaming or something, they're definitely on the quieter side. Kind of like rain droplets hitting a window. Moving on down to the trackpad, one thing I like that they did here is this built-in uh, touchscreen numpad. You'll see on the top right it says num lock. If you hold your finger there for two seconds, it'll bring up the touchscreen numpad. It's definitely a cool feature for those who use numpads. I don't for me. I did find that during browsing and stuff, I did accidentally uh, trigger this a few times accidentally by just leaving my finger there. So that was kind of annoying. But again, usually on a 15-inch laptop like this, you don't see numpads, so it's an added bonus for those who need that. And on the bottom there, you still have your left and right clicks. Some other things before we move on, on the top of the keyboard, you have five keys, three of them being volume keys, with the fourth key being a fan, which switches your performance profile in the Armory Crate, and the fifth key with the ROG logo actually brings up the Armory Crate software. But what's kind of odd is right below that, for the function row, you can see the exact same uh, profile key. So I don't know why they have two literally on top of each other like that. Minor, but I wanted to point it out. And then for the last of the actual physical features here, we can talk some I.O. ports. On the left side of the keyboard, you have three USB ports, plus a headphone jack. On the back side are two fan exhausts, Ethernet port, HDMI, USB Type-C, and the power port. Um, unfortunately, no Thunderbolt 3 here. Then on the right side is an additional fan exhaust and the slot for the Keystone. And this is something brand new that I haven't seen before, and it's really, really interesting. It's essentially a magnetic NFC flash drive, if you will, where it saves your game settings, you know, the lighting profiles you have, pretty much your settings for this individual laptop, all saved on this keystone. And when you plug it into the port, it opens this shadow drive for you to have private storage. 
It's definitely an interesting idea, and like I said, I haven't seen really anything like this before, especially with it being a magnetic NFC drive that's kind of replacing a flash drive if you think about it. It's a cool idea, and I'd really like to see where they take this later on down the line with some extra features, and who knows what else they could implement with this. And the next thing I wanted to touch on is their built-in Armory Crate software. And as you can see, it's kind of like this spider chart, which shows you the cooling, CPU performance, GPU performance, the energy saving, and the noise reduction. Booting this up lets you really tap into the performance, because enabling something like their turbo setting is going to pretty much unlock the full potential of the graphics card, and also allow for higher clock speeds, which in the end is going to be getting you more frames. More frames combined with the higher refresh rate is going to make for a great gaming experience. Putting on something like the window setting is going to be great for keeping the overall, you know, volume down while you're just browsing and stuff. Silent will literally make your laptop silent. <laughs> but for gaming and other more demanding tasks, I would definitely say go to performance or turbo so you can, like I said, just get the most out of this laptop. So like I said, not really having done too much laptop content in the past, I was super pumped the game on this because 240 hertz is very foreign to me. I've never gamed at that refresh rate. So when I got this in, downloaded a bunch of games so I could see how that looks and what that's all about. So you combine the GeForce RTX graphics with the Intel Core processor here, and you compare that with the speedy RAM and the SSD, we're gonna get pretty good performance out of the SCAR 3. So the big thing with RTX is the visual boost you get in things like explosions, metallic surfaces, and reflections. In Battlefield, there are tons of surfaces, whether it be your gun, a vehicle, or the muddy ground in battle, that really just make the world feel more alive now. Also in a game, Control, which I'll show you in a minute, the game actually reinforces the entire theme with having the actual concrete surfaces in the architecture. Having the explosions and effects reflect off the ground is not only gonna set the mood of the level, but it's literally driving the narrative of what you're playing. But first, let's check out some general performance benchmarks. When you're gaming in the heat of the moment, whether it is at 240 or 144 hertz, you're gonna have an advantage, especially in those fast-paced FPS games like I like to play. And as you can see, the only game coming in at under 60 FPS is Battlefield 5, and that's with RTX turned on. So it's doing more, but at a bit of a performance hit. With these quick benchmarks to show you, the green is the highest graphical setting possible in that game, with the white being the lowest possible graphics in that game. So RTX on Ultra, yes, under 60, but you turn it off and you're getting 81.1 frames per second at the highest setting. Things like Fortnite are at 136 FPS at the highest setting. And check out Overwatch. That's 177.8 FPS at the highest setting, with the lowest setting getting us 264.4 FPS. Really letting us take advantage of the refresh rate here. And in terms of the RTX performance, again, I wanted to show you a bit of a more in-depth breakdown here. Because again, since we have an RTX graphics card, why not show you, you know, what this is really capable of? For this, I tested it at every graphical setting with RTX on and off, as you can see. And I repeated those same tests again, but inside the Armory Create software, the turbo setting turned on. Those extra frames are represented by the red turbo setting benchmark. And especially in a fast paced game like Battlefield, you can see you're still getting pretty good performance at the highest settings, making it look good and feel good. Only time it really fell below the 60 frames per second is with RTX on, on the ultra graphical settings. How about a newer game like Control? This is one I was really excited to test out because I've heard a lot of great things about this. You're looking between 80 to 90 FPS average on high, 112 to 114 FPS on medium, and nearly 125 FPS on low. RTX on, yes, is gonna take a bit of a hit again, but medium and low settings are still gonna get you over 60 FPS. I did have some strange findings where medium was actually performing better than low in most use cases. But that's all obviously also going to depend on what's going on in that individual scene uh, during that gameplay at that time. And for the last benchmarks, putting it to the test in 3D Mark. For their RTX benchmark in Port Royal, we got a score of 3,994. Their Time Spy test, which is for DX12 games, we got a 3,396 graphics core with a 2512 GPU score. And their Skydiver test, which is mainly used for pushing laptops and stuff to see how these perform, we got a score of 32,443. So in terms of actual performance when it comes to gaming, you're looking at performance on par to high-end desktop PCs, all in the form factor of a laptop like this. In terms of thermals for the CPU, from a week of testing and under load, it averaged 85 degrees Celsius with the GPU coming in at 74 degrees Celsius. How about the battery life? Inside is a 66 watt battery with a 230 watt power brick that comes with it, and it held up pretty well. During gaming and benchmarking, I didn't have any battery drain while I was actually gaming with it plugged in. 
which some laptops do suffer from, so it was good to see that this one does not. Something like browsing the internet lasted four hours and 23 minutes, and gaming unplugged lasted one hour and eight minutes. However, I will say once it got around to 50% battery life remaining, I definitely noticed the performance hit, but that was also Battlefield at the highest setting. So bringing this all together here are the pros and cons. One thing I have to bring up that I didn't even really mention during this review was the speakers inside. These are fantastic. And while gaming, I really didn't even need to wear headphones. So we have great speakers in a gaming laptop, which is something that I have not seen from any gaming laptop that I've tested. You couple that with the, the specs in here, giving us great performance in our games for most of the games at the higher settings. You combine that with the overall 240 hertz refresh rate, and that's gonna give you an extremely awesome gaming experience. More frames, the better. Higher the refresh rate, the better, because in you know the heat of the moment, stuff like that, FPS games, you're gonna have that advantage, which is really cool. Now, the only real con that I noticed um, was on the right side, like I showed you before, we had that heat exhaust there. Uh, the heat is dissipating right out, pretty much, onto my hand while I was gaming. So, obviously, my hand and my mouse were right there, and that heat was just being blown onto it. And I did a quick Google search to see if there was any real info about this, and I found a channel called Jared's Tech, who benchmarked the thermals. And as you can see, most of the heat is coming out that hot spot on the right side. So it was really just that right side. The actual surface of the laptop and the keyboard really wasn't hot at all. And you know, mainly resting on WASD, I could not feel a noticeable amount of heat. So that was good to see, just the right side. Another con that people might bring up is the fact that there is no webcam on here. For me, I've never once used a laptop webcam. So to me, it's not a big issue at all. But like I said, bringing it all together for you guys, the pros and cons and benchmarks in the end with the specs, the screen, you have a highly capable gaming laptop that is on par with a lot of high-end desktop PCs. If you wanna check it out, I'll put a link for you in the description down below. You can get the different specs and stuff like that and they're all gonna be obviously priced accordingly to the model that you pick. Uh, but in the end, I am loving this gaming laptop and just the little things like the, uh, the keystone feature, the refresh rate, all makes for a great gaming experience. Now to wrap it up for my review of the ASUS ROG SCAR 3. Hope you enjoyed. Like I said, I'll drop a link for you in the description down below if you want to check it out. If you like this video and you want to see me do more, you know, gaming laptop stuff, let me know by giving that thumbs up button down below a big hit. So give it a thumbs up. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.